Please fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Welcome to Dog Bones. I'm Steve Dunning, and I'm here with my guest, Lynn Wachtel, who is an author of a new book, The Zoom Zoom Girls. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the book, and uh, we're going to make some, some treats for both dogs and the human variety. Uh, Lynn, what are we doing today? Well, first, thing, let me thank you uh, for uh, having me on, and uh, there's lots, lots to talk about. And we're going to start with our pets, and uh, I've realized only recently that even cats love something a little sweet. I had a cat mm -hmm. who I had for 10 years, and gave it a little piece of an oatmeal cookie, and he just kept following me around. Mm. So, I'd follow you around yeah. for an oatmeal cookie. <laughs> oatmeal cookie, yes, <laughs> homemade. And so here today we're having, uh, we're making ice cream for dogs. Uh -huh. Now we've kind of adapted it so that it'll fall in with the fall mode, and it is pumpkin, pumpkin yogurt ice cream. And yogurt has a, um, is, is safe for dogs, mm -hmm as long as you don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. I think that's with almost anything. Mm -hmm. So if you don't overdo it, these are these will be small portions. Mm -hmm. You can take it out of a bowl, you can take it, uh, you can freeze it in an, in an ice cube tray, tray and it's safe for them. And the ingredients we've used is, uh, used are um, Greek yogurt and uh, that is plain Greek yogurt, and that is uh, a cup of Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. One cup here. Yeah, yep. one cup there. And it's very simple. Then uh, health food uh, or healthy peanut butter, mm -hmm. just half a cup. Mm -hmm. And pure pumpkin. So and half a cup? Yeah, half a cup of oh. uh, the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> and pure and pumpkin. Pure pumpkin. And we want to emphasize and, yeah. that this is no ingredients in this. This is just this sort is of pureed pumpkin. Pureed pumpkin, exactly. No sugar. Added. No sugar, no, no spices. Because that would not be good for the dogs. So Yeah, so pure. we just take, as a, as a vegetable, it's a pure pumpkin puree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the process on that is extremely simple. All Let's go you to it. Yes. That is, we take, and I would take the pumpkin first because that is the most liquid. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the peanut Did butter... Did I mess up your spoon? Do you want no, to no, no, no. I have one here, right here, right, right at my fingertips. <laughs> <laughs> she comes prepared. Uh, yes, yes, like yes. <laughs> well, you have to remember, I'm a Zoom Zoom girl, and Zoom Zoom girls learned everything almost right. <laughs> uh -huh. We were taught that way and so right away we knew exactly what we had to do and followed the instructions. So that is a large can. It's 29, um, it calls, the recipe calls for 30 ounce, uh, 29 ounces, but the can is I believe 30 mm -hmm. and we use it all. And I don't think you're going to get any complaints from the dogs. No. It's too pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> one ounce more. <laughs> Not at all. And then what I think we'll do is uh, just add the peanut butter because that will stay in the middle mm -hmm. and we'll be able to... If you have any left over, you know, uh, it won't go to waste. Oh, I know. Well, I won't, <laughs> I won't scrape the pan. <laughs> You're and so kind. Yeah, there you go. You've got peanut butter. I could never be a chef because whenever I'm making food for myself, yes. I'm always eating. Oh, you know? well, you know, actually, I've watched uh, Jacques Pepin, and he actually tastes uh, well, things there and there and mm -hmm. finishes it with a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and now we will add the yogurt, which uh, I had said was one cup. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should... Now, do you want the rest of the yogurt? No, it's okay. <laughs> so one cup of yogurt, a half a cup of peanut butter, and yes, um, um, 30 ounces of... Um, exactly. Ounces? Uh, uh, um, yeah, it, it is ounces. Okay. Doesn't get any easier than that. Now, I'm going to pulse it because we want to make sure... And I'm going to use this spoon here again. 
Just to make to sure we get this it. going. Exactly. Mm. I think it's the peanut butter that gets. Mm. <laughs> that sticks to the roof of the blender. Right. And this is actually perfect uh, while you're having your treats at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Your pet could be also, yeah. your dog could be enjoying it. So when we're having the pumpkin pie, yeah, they're having we can the have the pumpkin ice cream. Right, and you know what? Ice cream is actually for any time of year. Mm -hmm. It's no longer something where you have um, it's have just it. For just summertime. no, right. no, not at all. So let's get this. That's a lot. Of this is yeah. very noisy. It blender. is. It, it is. That's why we don't. That's why we don't keep it on too long. Okay, I think we right, got that. Just blend the thing. I yeah. will edit all of that out. <laughs> <laughs> edit the noise out. Yeah. There we go. And what we will do, Steve, maybe you can help me just get an ice cube tray. Oh, sure. There. Do you have a preference for color? White is always matches everything. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to spoon it into each of these. Mm -hmm. And actually, it. it is so good that you could eat it yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll fill all of these. And you could, if you don't have the patience uh, to do this, you can put it in a bowl and give them a reasonable portion and they'll lick it right up. Mm -hmm. so. right. Scoop it out yeah. Yeah. With, a, with an ice cream scoop even. Oh, absolutely. And, then, and j that way you have your measurement correct. So. Oh, with the ice cube, you, you yeah. know, it portions it out. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah. But maybe you have a hungry dog who just loves it, so you can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And then the step after this is. Looks like you might need the other ice cream ice cube tray. <laughs> well, we're gonna have a few bits of is left yes we we have actually this makes probably two ice cube trays all right well, and once they're from, at it. yes help me here <laughs> we don't mind that's what's good about having an assistant in the kitchen <laughs> i'll be one of the zoom zoom ets yes <laughs> well Lori, the protagonist she had to do everything herself but she loved it so much that it was never a chore you know mm -hmm. it was always something that she was experimenting with and trying. And some of the standards she stuck with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when it was basically, it, th at that time it was people food, but um, mm -hmm. she stuck to the um, basics and started out using uh, Lipton's French onion soup. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> and then from that point on, it was really um, a matter of uh, learning to cook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, she never, uh, she had a sister who constantly said to her, you know what, you always got to learn everything about cooking, and me, I, all I could make was scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was always a little conflict there. So during the course of the story, she, she's learning to cook? Is it? Yes, exactly. Um, Lori you, you angle that. Maybe we could even pull Oh, it maybe we can. That would be, but I think these little, here we go, we're almost done. Whoops. Uh, Lori just had this interest in cooking, and when she had her, got her first book, was given to her by one of her peers or mm -hmm. friends, she just got right into it. It was so interesting to her hmm. that she decided from that time she would practice every weekend. It was almost like a Julia, uh, Julia, Julia. Julia Ch Child. Yeah, yeah, and Julia Child. So she was not afraid of doing something with cooking. Hmm. Now, so, should we level these out? Like, like just kind of tap them or something? There we go, just go like that. All right, and I'm gonna and go away and put these in the freezer. All right, we'll, we don't mind that. Okay. All right. Yep. It's a little bit of an obstacle course because I have to make it around the camera. <laughs> around the camera. Well, I'm sure you'll come out fine. I really didn't plan this in advance. I would have made sort of a space in the freezer. <laughs> so 
this is like anyone's freezer, folks. Yes, where uh. you open it and everything <laughs> comes at you. Yeah. <laughs> but I think this is a, a very good recipe for, um, for dogs because it's healthy and uh, it's easy to make. Yeah. I mean, even today, no one wants to bother with uh, cooking over a hot stove. Oh, no, especially for their animal, you know. Yes, kind of I agree with you there. And, uh, or else, you know, they're just not going to do it. Right. No, they aren't. I mean, it's easier to cook even people, uh, to go out and yeah. get people food. And one thing about the 60s is, first, there were no microwaves. Mm -hmm. And besides that, um, there were no instant foods, uh, for example, like Cool Whip. There wasn't. The, uh, yeah. There was Dream Whip, but you still had to whip it up. It oh. wasn't. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Dream Whip, you had to whip. Whip. It was like a, a mix. Yeah, yes, and it was a shelf. It had shelf life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you were able then to mix, whip it up. But now we have Cool Whip. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so easy. And they didn't have Cool Whip in the 1960s. No, no. no. Wow. And then, as I said, they didn't have microwaves. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do here is, in, in the book, is the recipe from the 60s for chocolate mousse. Okay. And it was a very popular item uh, as a dinner, as a dessert mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during that time. It was rich, it was good, and it wasn't instant. Mm -hmm. So that is what I put in the book because it just brings you back to that time. Mm -hmm. And you find that chocolate mousse is not favored today so much because it's time consuming? Normally, yes. I think people are not willing to, but it's a very elegant dessert. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and even someone in their 19 or 20, they learn to cook. And so to them, it wasn't just like instant, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Because the gals would um, send cookies, for example, to the, the guys in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so cookies was the first uh, they, uh, learned. they learned. <laughs> yes, they learned cookies. And, yeah. then, and so that was part of it. So then it naturally came into desserts. Mm -hmm. And um, Lori went all the way. Mm -hmm. She decided at some point she was going to have all her friends come over with their boyfriends. And she was going to make them a meal they would not forget. Mm -hmm. So and it included this chocolate mousse it recipe. It definitely Which included the recipe itself happens to be in the um, in the book at yes. the end. And yeah. I'm gonna and take this out to show our guests what we're making today. This is an right. example yes. of the finished product. Right. And isn't it beautiful? And chocolate mousse. Yes. With mint leaf and a fresh raspberry. Right. On top. And it it's a rich dessert, so nowadays the best way to do that is just put a small portion, mm -hmm. and that way you get the sampling of the chocolate and the raspberry and just enough to satisfy your chocolate mm -hmm. craving. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and I use, as I say, small dishes. That we used to use uh, much larger ones, but in order to keep up with the time. We uh, put them in very small, and you can mix and match dishes, uh, the sure. serving dishes. Sometimes they're old champagne glasses, mm -hmm. and uh, or uh, basically a, an a aperitif uh, glass, something like that, and mm -hmm. that makes it just perfect. Mm -hmm. And it makes it special too when they're all sort of in a different container. Too, exactly, you know? exactly. So that's how uh, that's how it's done. Mm -hmm. Well, so let's, let's, um, <laughs> let's give it a, a try. What do you say? I think we're we're game okay. for that. So the first thing we're going to do, which is, I will take their three eggs, mm -hmm. and we will take them and we will separate them. <laughs> no, I'm not going to juggle three eggs. That's okay. We're not going to. Especially since I'm not completely out of practice. Well, I think I've got an extra egg somewhere just in case. <laughs> All right. Now. And th there's a trick with, um, with egg uh, whites. The best thing, you're not supposed to get any 
of the yolk into the egg white because it makes it more difficult to uh, whip it up. Mm -hmm. If there's anything foreign in, in the egg white, then it will not. If there's sugar in the bowl, it won't whip up. So it's, it's very fussy. <laughs> so you need to get pure egg whites. Yes. You know, sometimes it's easier and just to you know what? use it to put it in your hand. There you go. That is the easiest way. Just and separate it that way and, and try to not get the shells in there. That <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because someone will definitely get it. If not. There. Okay. And there's the one. I learned from um, my um, chef, the regular chef on the show, mm -hmm. Kevin Ramble, he was showing me that to crack an egg, mm -hmm. rather than cracking it on the edge, which I always did, which you I crack did. it on a flat surface. That way you don't get all the splinters of the, of the it, cl it cuts it a little more cleanly. Yes. So I thought that was Well, there's actually a, a way now that they do it too. You take a, a bottle from, a, let's say, Poland Springs water, a small mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. and you turn it upside down and you suck out the egg yolk and it picks it right up out of the it's a it's a really neat little trick I'm and not I've tried following you on that. Well you turn the bottle upside down uh -huh. and you take the bottle and you squeeze it a little and you suck up the egg yolk oh. into the bottle. Oh okay. Oh and it just leaves all the whites behind <laughs> and then you can put your um, in, into your the rest what's left the egg whites huh. put them into a um, into a bowl mm -hmm. so so we have the coveted yeah. egg whites yes and, and what are we're we going using this for for anything yes okay. that we're using or we're using everything we're uh -huh. not wasting anything today so the <laughs> now what you do with the egg yolks and the sugar is you put them into a double boiler. A double mm -hmm. boiler is basically a pot with water that you get hot. Mm -hmm. And is this when hot? yes, that's very uh, hot. So well. in this case, and you can buy a double boiler too, mm -hmm. but in this case we're using a bowl and and you can just So there's just water in there. That water in there yeah. is um, hot water mm -hmm. and then you turn it to the lowest you can mm -hmm. and leave it like that. And we've had that on for about 20 minutes so it's, it's right. heated. It's heated thoroughly. and you put the sugar in first because if you put the egg yolks in there they'll cook on you. Right, right. So you don't want that. The sugar is fine for that. Right. And just getting the lumps out. Yeah. They'll they'll go by themselves as oh, the right. as the as the liquid comes into now them. Now for the yolks. Yes, and begin stirring. stirring. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I and feel the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. It's turning like sort of like this yellow goo. Yes, it is. And that will get um, more liquefied as we go along. Okay. And in this case, we add uh, four tablesp uh, tablespoons of Grand Marnier, mm -hmm. which is a liquor. And I found that the best way, instead of you don't want to buy an expensive bottle, buy the little one. Uh, buy now, one of the Where do you get samplers of Grand Marnier? Or in, a, any, in a liquor store? Or? In a liquor store, exactly. Yeah. And so we're going to add that to this here. Okay. That's a good tip. Just so yeah. you don't have to buy a, a huge bottle, which it would take you like three years to finish off with guests. And That's that. right, and and this yeah. is not inexpensive. So, mm -hmm. and after that we Ooh, will. It smells good. Yeah, doesn't it smell good? I'm not a liquor guy, but it does smell yeah, good. Yeah, th that kind of keeps it uh, just with that very special. Now you can, if you really don't want to go that extra mile. Um, and by the way, maybe we'll put the timer on for five minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, five minutes, and then we, we can also, if you don't want to go with the Grand Marnier, you can use orange uh, flavoring, orange extract. Oh, really? You can use that, but I, I go for the, go as for I the, say, the I'm, real stuff. I, I'm a, I'm a purist. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't have used the orange extract in the 1960s. They did. Did you? Yeah, not orange, I'm sorry, they did use the Grand Marnier. Yeah because Grand Marnier was a very popular uh, And that is drink. in your book? 
is yes. that part of the recipe? Yes, it is. And then the vanilla, we're going to add one teaspoon here of vanilla. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whoops. Never yeah, heard. A little more. Yeah, a little okay. more. It would have been better a little more of the ground money. Yay, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> okay. And what we're going to do while you're stirring that, I'm going to take five ounces of, you can use bittersweet chocolate, you can use semi-sweet chocolate, but the easiest is to use are the chips. Mm -hmm. They're very easy. You mm -hmm. can use a bar of whatever and just mm, measure no, out. Yeah, yeah. and we're, go good. we're going to melt that. So, um, as I said, the, this is a combination. This is five ounces. It's a combination of semi-sweet and it's a combination uh, with that of bittersweet. So it depends this on... This is what you have in the bowl, is a combo of... Yeah, this is a combo. Okay. Yes. Oh, and then there's also milk chocolate. Can you yes, use that? Yes, you can use milk chocolate. It all is dependent upon your taste. Okay. So... And then if you're really into sweet, you can go with white chocolate chips. That's right. Well, you, it's you like nothing but pure sugar. Pure sugar. But <laughs> you know what? As long as you enjoy it, that's uh -huh. all that counts. Yeah. Okay. Did and they so have white chocolate in the 1960s? Hmm. We, let's see, I'm trying to think, I don't think it was, it, every so often, like in Manhattan, they had Barracini chocolates there, and every so often they would have a little bit of, they'd have one or two uh, out of the whole store were white chocolate. I remember that because I liked white chocolate at that time. Sometimes when you're younger, you like the, oh, yeah. the white chocolate, and as you get older, you like the bittersweet. Or Our God likes white chocolate. Oh, white chocolate. Well, I have to Doesn't say. He? <laughs> okay. <A lot. laughs> now, there's a trick with the chocolate that you have to be extremely careful. If you're melting, we used to melt it over a double boiler, mm -hmm. just like we're doing with that. Mm -hmm. But in this case, when you have the microwave, you have to do it a little bit at a time. Uh, you can't, it, it should probably go at 30. Uh, seconds, uh, 30 seconds at a time. Yeah, a little bit at a time. Because chocolate burns very easily in mm -hmm. the microwave. On the, if, you, if you did it over the uh, stove and not boil it. You're in more control. You're definitely in more control. Well, why didn't we do that, Lynn? Well, I, I didn't <laughs> want you to have to be mixing everything. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> It's an hour-long show, so, you know. Oh, we look, we have plenty to talk <laughs> and about. there's no commercials. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we're going there. to do, yeah, that you can leave that for a moment. And you might need more there. More time, yeah, because they have to be gone. Yeah. So I stir them, or? Uh, they'd probably could use a little stirring there. It's probably a wooden spoon, metal uh, spoon? Yeah, metal spoon's fine. All right. Yeah, they're just kind of starting. starting. Yeah. Another 30? Another 30, and we'll do it in increments of 30. That way it makes it, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. And what we're going to do now is actually get our mixer ready. Wonderful. <laughs> figure yes. that out. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me to figure out that oven. Don't? Uh, that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just put it in one of these. That's perfect. Now we need the mixer. Oh, see, you're, I'm telling you, you're the best assistant I've had yet. Ah. <laughs> She's gone through a lot of them. <laughs> right. So um, we needed the mixer. The mixer is right over here. We have it. We just need this, to. This one? Uh, no, we're going to use the big mixer. Oh, okay. That's the easiest. Oh. Too many things happening at once. Now the chocolate is out of the microwave. Well, don't worry and about it too much. If it's warm in there, it'll still keep melting. All right, and then we need ah, the, the, the timer <laughs> of all things. This is, what, this is fun. I can't take the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you something. That's what it's like in the kitchen. Yeah. That's what it's like in the kitchen, no matter what. Uh, Julia Child used to make it so easy. In fact, she used to say, you know, if something falls on the floor, just pick it up and don't tell your guests what happened. And if it came out wrong, don't worry about it. If you don't tell them, they don't know. Right. <laughs> they'll know. So they'll know. Okay. So how's right. our how's uh, semi melted? Let's check that out. It oh, just yeah. needs a drop more. I would put it in 
10? Do, do, yeah, do it 15. Okay. So we're sure we've got it that way. And I will stir the pot here. What we're supposed to do with this, uh, with the eggs and so on, yeah. we're supposed to get them fluffy, kind of, uh, or just creamy, what, uh, pale yellow and creamy, and that will make them kind of have a little bit of air in them. <laughs> now imagine when there's just one person cooking. So. Oh, see, this is why I don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> now this can stay here and rest for a few minutes till it cools down a little bit. All right. Just keep stirring that even though the timer went off, just keep uh, stirring it that way. Is there a term for that, kind of like resting? Uh, in this case, resting because you want to put the egg yolks in there so that they cook a tiny bit into the chocolate. When, they, when mm. it's warm, the egg yolks cook a tiny bit. And though they don't uh, curdle or anything like that, you don't want them to curdle. But so. I just want to show everybody what we have achieved here. So this is our. That is your egg, egg mixture. Yeah. And you can see mm -hmm. that it's turned a sort of golden yellow. And all very the. Very smooth. Yeah. And, and then we it, want to add the. Well, we're going to do that, but we do that slowly um, wh while it's cooling still. We can turn this one off. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Be careful because it explodes before it turns off. Okay. Yeah. It goes up. Just keep stirring it for right. me. And I will take the egg whites. Danger, danger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I will put them into the mixer and that will be a bit noisy but and one little trick to making the egg whites beat up mm -hmm. uh, beat to a really when we're going to beat these to stiff okay. is adding a tiny drop of cream of tartar but it's only a pinch it's not a teaspoon it's uh, nothing as large as that and if I can just get a drop onto here, that's Cream even too much. Cream of tartar. Cream of tartar. Ooh. And you want to put that like under here so you can see. Yeah. Oh. Put the camera up there. Oh, the camera. oh yeah, over here. <laughs> okay, and just put uh, the cream of tartar. Yeah, and we'll see how much a pinch is. A pinch is, well, I'd say it's less than half a teaspoon. In fact, the best way to find a pinch is. A pinch. A pinch. Mm -hmm. There's a pinch. And you drop it in there. I'll add the other one. It's not going to hurt it. And by the way, this is a very old bottle of cream. And I just refill it every so often. Mm -hmm. So it's probably from the late 60s and 70s. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I just refill it. You know, they don't it. put expiration dates on the No, they things, don't. Most know, and, and we ha must have some spices back from 1982 in our cupboard. I'm sure of it. One yes. day I actually went through some of the spices that we had. Yes. It was pretty scary. <laughs> yes, yes. They don't normally spy, uh, spoil, but what they do is they lose their zest. Yeah. So, and here... Kind of like us. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the Zoom Zoom girl never loses her zest. <laughs> and what I'm going to do here... Or Vim and Vigor. Vim and Vigor... Um, that's exactly right. They have a lot of vim and vigor, and uh, that's why they're called the Zoom Zoom Girls. Mm -hmm. While I'm beating this to stiff, I'm going to add just one tablespoon, I'll turn it down a little bit, and add one tablespoon of sugar, and then slowly, I did it a little fast, but just beat it up a oh, little more. Oh, it's fluffy. More. Yes, that yes. Does it. That's really the cream of tartar. That's the real trick. Ah. Uh, okay. Mm. And I think, if you could believe it, this is done. Huh. This part is done. So. All right. Cooking is, is an amazing thing, and it has changed, again, as I've mentioned before, from the 60s. Mm. It changed. Uh, quite a bit because there's so much more conveniences, there are so many more conveniences today. Mm -hmm. 
and in uh, terms of tools and appliances or tools or ap uh, uh, appliances ingredients even have changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, when you learn to cook like Lori did in the book you, it, li it stays with you all your life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't even want to go away from the, the pure, uh, the pure mm -hmm. right. So um, that was very important, in fact. Uh, mm -hmm. We still live with that. Now, what is the time frame? You're, you, you mentioned the 1960s, but what is the, the year that the, um, it, the story takes place? It in? takes place, it starts in 1965, mm -hmm. and it goes on through the very beginning of 1970. Mm -hmm. And it goes through all the historical events that this happened. That's what I love about your book, because mm -hmm. there's sort of matter of fact. Yes. You mentioned them, you, you mentioned certain events from the 1960s as mm -hmm. being on television at the time or whatever. And yes. It takes you back, you know, when you did live through those events. Um, it it absolutely, that's what I found with, it's sort of the, a book that women are just, they come back to me always. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, and they tell me, I love the book. Mm -hmm. I want more, and I am enjoying going back mm -hmm. to when I was younger. Mm -hmm. you That's know? what it does. That's yes. what, I, what it did when I was reading it. it. It was taking me back to when, these times. And the thing I like about this book, and I wanted to ask you about this, mm -hmm. is that it's written in, in rather short chapters. And tell me what your thinking is on that. Well, the, what started out with the book, what got me to think about it was because I was doing an article for one of the magazines. Mm -hmm. And on interviewing the women uh, 50 plus, I found out first that they seemed to be wanting something to take them back. Mm -hmm. And they just, that topic kept coming up. Mm -hmm. After that, I thought about it, now what is it we like, or I like in a book? I don't have the time always. I pick up a book at night on my night table, mm -hmm. and I read a few pages. Mm -hmm. In reading a few pages, I don't want to have to struggle through it. Mm -hmm. I want to read a couple pages, and that's sort of how the chapters are. They're mm -hmm. almost, in a way, short stories. I know. I noticed that, and I thought when I read this, it's, rather deliberate that it all was. of the chapters are two or three pages yes and I liked it because I I'm always taking a book with me because you always have to wait whether it's in the doctor's office the dentist's right. office or the post office right. in line or wherever you're going exactly. you're always waiting mm -hmm. so if you have a book with you yes you're never bored you no. always can pick something up and I like this because you could read a chapter or two while just in line exactly you know? and you don't lose your place mm -hmm. when you come back to it you automatically kind of know where it is yeah I, I, I hate it when I have to reread the previous chapter mm -hmm. to get back to my place right. and I did that purposely mm -hmm. yep, because it also worked. to me read like a TV show mm -hmm. that is broken up into a lot of short scenes. Yes. And I thought that the way that it's written seems reminiscent of the times as well. Exactly. And that was really how it was written. It was that was uh, the purpose in that because I know our concentration today is not as good as it it was years ago. We knew we had to do something and we concentrated hard on it. But now, then all of a sudden, you're interrupted by this, you're interrupted by that. And I, want, and I wanted everyone to know these girls in their own right. And there is a lot of dialogue going on between them, talking about what was important to them. And they didn't all agree. Mm -hmm. And yet they became lifelong friends, but they didn't always agree. There was a, a conservative one. One was sort of conservative, another was a twiggy type, mm -hmm. and uh, then another one was a hippie. Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. had a, a definite point of view, but she wasn't as a hippie into this a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. She was hippie and everything, but not every, not everything. She didn't agree with every single thing. But she taught the other girls what was going on in the hippie world. Mm -hmm. Tell me, as they grew older, because the book starts out mm -hmm. sort of as a flat, um, as 
current day, and then it goes back to when they were originally friends in the 1965s. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So, any of those did did any of those characteristics that they have grow with them? Definitely. Or did any of them grow out of those characteristics? Well, I'm sorry. They did. They always kept their basic premise of who they were. Mm -hmm. But as times uh, changed, they went along with it to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. To a certain degree, I mean, Pr Priscilla was a hippie, mm -hmm. but she was studying to be an attorney, a lawyer, mm -hmm. and she had to change with the times a bit because uh, she had to be a little more conservative sometimes just in order to fit into the world of uh, uh, yes, mm -hmm. so she had to fit into that. Right. Uh, the other girls, they grew, and they all, even though they had been not as independent, they were much more traditional, a couple of them. Over time, they said, you know, I ha in order to grow and to become who I really want to be, then I have to change, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and they were open to change, but not overnight. Mm -hmm. And basically, so they're it was a genuine change. It was a definite, genuine change. Yeah. You know. Now you speak of these women as f real people. Yes. That you know. Mm -hmm. Did you find in writing the book mm -hmm. that it almost wrote itself at some points because you knew the characters so well, you knew what they yes. were going to say? Yes. Yes. It, yeah. it almost did because I knew each one of them, uh, in the sense these are. Uh, a story is usually a composite of things that you know about, people you've met. Uh, it's not anyone in particular, mm -hmm. but you do meet people that way, and they just came alive to me. Mm -hmm. They just happened to be there, and they weren't anyone in particular that I knew, but it was a composite of this one and the other part of another one, and that, that's how they, you know, became became live to me and I always think of them as right around the corner mm -hmm. you know so you said they became live to you mm -hmm. does are you meaning that at the beginning stages of writing the book uh, you didn't know them as well and then oh, as you wrote them? exactly the prologue is today and so that is I I knew them I waited with the prologue till actually towards the end of the mm -hmm, book mm -hmm. um, I, uh, writing the book mm -hmm. but uh, when they were they were alive in my mind to a certain degree but they grew they absolutely grew into who they became mm -hmm. you know they it was just a, and it was their friendship too that helped that a lot because one would teach the other it was a totally different time I mean I I think of the one passage where there's a, a, a Mets game, and it was a Mets World Series, mm -hmm. and they were excited about going. They all stood there, and they were cheering on, and then they sat down, and then one of the characters, Marsha, jumps up and yells out, the F word. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't say it because it's still in my heart that way. <laughs> and she. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. And we could say it, and it wouldn't be a. But to me, it's still in my heart that way. And, and she yells it out. And the audience around her, I mean, the, the um, fans around her, they looked at her, they gave her an incredible look, and they like said, it was like, what did you say? Yeah. And that was the social peer pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're in this sort of gray area because it's supposed to be cool in the 60s to say anything. You know, language yes. was so free. Among the suddenly, hippies. Suddenly. Among, yeah, the, among hippies, the hippies. And it took but not everybody around in the, in the, in the audience. Say, no, they, they, they right away. And that peer pressure uh, translated into many areas of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think sometimes it wasn't so bad. I think it was, I actually thought it was good because even children and everything, somebody was guiding them mm -hmm. not to become so much uh, like the Roman Empire, like, oh, we could do anything. Mm -hmm. And so there were rules mm -hmm. and there were mores, boundaries. boundaries. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I quite honestly find when I look back at it, and that's what everyone, lo- all the women that read this love that, mm-hmm. because it's not today. Mm-hmm. Today, anything goes. Then anything did not go. Mm-hmm. You know, so they were, they were really quite, you know. So in, in a way, it's sort of nostalgic, but it's not. Right. I mean, you're not trying to write a story that is just nostalgia. It's, no, there, no, 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 no. more to it. Oh, yes, and there's a lot of history in this book. Mm-hmm. A lot of things that I have heard people say, oh, I remember that, and everyone remembers something different. Oh, yeah. Everyone, I remember you know. the, the moon landing. Oh! You know why? Because <laughs> um, I think I was like 12. I, I have to check the date and my birthday and all that, but yes. I was young, and I remember it was in the summertime. It was in and July. I, I, ha- I was sick for some reason. Uh-huh. I had a cold or something strange, and, and there was a picnic at my grandmother's house, and all my relatives and my family went, what? and I stayed home alone, yes. sli- you know, sleeping, laying on the couch, watching the moon landing. Right, <laughs> right, right. And if you will, I mean, in, in fact, in, in the book here, somewhere, let's see, I thought it was maybe... I have egg white on me, but that's okay. Um, I think it was in chapter 54. Um, Let's just find that, just to run it by you a quick second here. Um, 54. Okay, see here, and if you don't mind, I'll just Mm -hmm. put through a passage. On Sunday, the day of America's Apollo 11, uh, the day America's Apollo 11 was scheduled to land on the moon, I was up early. Savoring my first cup of coffee, I reflected on how my life had changed in the last six months and how much more self-confident I'd become. Mm -hmm. With my dinner party only a few hours away, and this was when Lori made the chocolate mousse for this, Mm -hmm. I concentrated on what I loved most, cooking. I sautéed a bunch of chopped leeks in butter until golden brown, poured them in to the osterizer and slowly added the heavy cream, Mm -hmm. salt and pepper. Then I set the thick, creamy vichyssoise in the refrigerator to chill. Now remember, Lori was only 19 or 20 there. Mm -hmm. So this is somebody taking on a big task. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now came the most challenging part of the meal. I'd roasted four ducks in salt the night before. It was time to tackle the true test of a Julia Child wannabe. Removing the ducks from the refrigerator with a sharp knife, I skillfully uh, deboned each one. An hour later, I admired my culinary creations. A cold, creamy vichyssoise, eight succulent, perfectly deboned duck halves, and dessert, a decadent mousse au chocolat. And this... (laughs) <laughs> you want to start? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, well, we I may have lost some of that. But uh, okay, no, okay, no, that's good. <laughs> it's off anyway. So this is w- the day of the moon landing. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on to tell how all her friends came over mm-hmm. and watched the moon landing on a black and white TV mm-hmm. with rabbit ears antennas. Mm-hmm. And they were just mesmerized. That's what I love about it because you explain how she goes over to straighten their rabbit ears to get a clearer picture yes. and all those things I had completely forgotten about you but we all did that we did yeah. we did and it and I tried to make it as real as possible mm-hmm. because I almost just put my mind in that mindset and mm-hmm. that's what happened tell me was there anything that anything that you wrote about in the book that mm-hmm. actually happened to you while you were writing and you were saying hey I mean, that's an, uh, an interesting experience I'm going to put that in the book did that ever happen Oh, there are a number of them. I can't think of which one sometime, but there were definitely a number. I mean, even even the fact of the simple thing of the rabbit ears, I remember doing that Mm -hmm. so many times Mm -hmm. because that was such an important event. And we didn't want, no matter what it was, we didn't want to miss it. And there there were a number, number of things in the book that um, there's an event where there's a party with, uh, oh, there, astrology is another thing. Mm-hmm. Astrology was very big at that time. Mm-hmm. And I still to this day can remember people's signs. Mm-hmm. And maybe their name will escape me, but I know their astrological sign. Mm-hmm. And Linda Goodman was a 
very popular uh, writer at that time. Mm -hmm. And we followed it. We followed her, and it wasn't a matter of every day, well, I'll read my horoscope today and see if this is gonna happen and that. It wasn't that. It was how you got to know someone. And you right away knew that many of the traits, not every one of them, were of that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you knew uh, someone was, uh, we mentioned a Virgo there in the book, and they were very precise and so on. Mm -hmm. We mentioned, and all the girls um, went to a book signing with Linda Goodman. Mm -hmm and uh, they were just so anxious to learn who they really were or who was compatible with them. <laughs> so, yeah, right. <laughs> Isn't that today? I think that's what people do. They, they also want to know, but they're not, they, they don't has, have as much knowledge. I mean, if you were to ask me particular signs, I could tell you some of their traits. All right, so explain what a, a Leo is like. Well, a Leo in the first <laughs> place, let's talk about it. And, and maybe this is a little, Usually they have a mane of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> well, <good. laughs> and um, so, and Leos, I believe, are an earth sign. Uh, um, no, they're not an earth sign. Uh, they're a fire sign, and there are four fire signs. Um, there is uh, beginning with uh, an Aries, mm -hmm. and then there is uh, the Leo, mm -hmm and uh, actually it might be three and uh, the next one I think uh, Scorpio is um, uh, let's see there, there are four uh, three of each really mm -hmm. I and, mean there's water fire air signs, are they compatible with each other or not necessarily not necessarily I don't think so no 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 not necessarily because each sign each person has three signs within their sign oh. so I, for example, am a Pisces. My next sign is a Taurus, mm -hmm. which is the moon sign. The sun sign is the one you're born under. The moon sign is the next one. And then there's a third one, and that's the way people see you. Mm -hmm. So you're three signs in one. So every Taurus, every Leo, they're not going to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. and, but I believe, and going on with the astrology for a second, I believe that I've studied this enough to know, to notice that 95% of two compatible people, whether they're married or what, their compatibility, there is one sign in the other sign. Oh. For hmm. example, my sign is the Pisces, my moon sign is the Taurus, and my spouse sign is a Taurus. Uh -huh. And I've done this with uh, numerous people in my family and friends. Mm -hmm. And if they really basically get along one of the other one's sign, and it doesn't matter which one, if they have three signs, it could be a Gemini at the end, one of them has the other sign in them. And maybe that's how they meet. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how people kind of connect first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Well, <laughs> everything is still intact here. <laughs> the whole idea of connection is, is so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. you know? We've known each other for, I want to say, 15 years, 20 years maybe? Right. A long time. Yes, uh, quite a long time. It doesn't seem that long. But no, I remember but time goes you. by that way. <laughs> I mean, the 60s seemed like yesterday yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, and um, I don't know where I was going with that. Well, time. but that we've known each other and yeah. somehow there's compatibility there. You know, that's you know, right. You know. There's something I, that goes on. I always enjoy when you come to my store and visit and we sit and we just talk. Mm -hmm. so we just go on and off on tangents. And, and you know why fun. that too? It's not contrived. Mm -hmm. We are who we are. I'm, I find myself, I'm the person I am. And what you see here is what you get. Mm -hmm. I am that person. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all, and I tried with the girls to have them each have their own thing. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, they have. Yeah. They have, not that they agree all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they really don't, And but each one is a sampling of that time. Mm -hmm. mm. And it was 1967 to 1970. Mm -hmm. So they are within that, and this is going to be a trilogy. Oh, is it? Yes, okay. yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. you're not, yeah. you haven't seen the last of mm -hmm. the Zoom Zoom Girls. And what will, I mean, what are you thinking? How will it relate to the Zoom Zoom Girls? I mean, will it be like the Zoom Zoom Girls? Grow up. <laughs> grow up or <laughs> go to India? Or <laughs> well, that's all. It's all filtering through my mind right now mm -hmm. because 
I, I want them to be uh, interesting and keep their own characters, but also do things that a Zoom Zoom girl would do. Yeah.